Morning guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I thought I'd jump on here just a little early. I've been having a heck of a time with Facebook Live and my internet fighting, so I haven't had good connections. There's been a lot of pauses, so I thought I'd try and see. It's pretty overcast today, and I never know what I'm going to get, so... Anyway, this is day eight and day nine of the November 30-day Gratefully Prepared Challenge. I'm uh, sorry I didn't make it on yesterday. We were having connectivity issues, and I'm having problems getting um, the videos up onto YouTube. It's taking all day, so I can't broadcast while I'm uploading. What are you eating? <laughs> Get going. <laughs> As he crunches in my ear behind me here. But um, I want to encourage you guys to join me. We are, we are um, doing this challenge for a couple reasons. When you are more grateful in your life, things just go better. You're happier when you're going through your, your valleys. Um, it's better. Uh, just because you're focusing on the good instead of the bad, it's very easy to get caught up on the bad. When you're happy and when you're joyful and when life feels good, even though things may be going wrong, because they're always going to, um, you, you tend to view life differently. You... Um, focus on things differently, you learn better, it's just a fact. Uh, when you're happy, everything's better, and when you're joyful. So, we're doing this challenge so that you are more aware of your surroundings and paying more attention to what is good in your life, and also so that you are learning as you go, because there's so many levels to preparedness, and it's overwhelming for many, and I wanted to just kind of walk you through the different levels of preparedness and kind of help you on your journey, um, especially those of you that are new to it. So today, I am very thankful for so many things, and it's so hard to pick and choose. <laughs> You're crazy. There's the mountain boy. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to my zoo. The animals are always out of the cages, and it's always wild and crazy here. No, but anyway, um, there's so many things for me to choose from in my walk uh, for gratitude because I see, that's what I choose to see in my life. And, you know, something that really resonates to me, I go for walks every day, I take the dogs out, and I'm really grateful for that time outside. It's just amazing what uh, utopia I find <laughs> he's quiet the whole time and then I get on live and he starts digging into all kinds of stuff <laughs> anyway you can't you can't change them from 7 to 21 right? they still do the same stuff it's kind of like when you get on the phone and everything breaks loose <laughs> anyway when I'm outside there's just a level of utopia for me um, being able to just be out there take in the fresh air see things I want to ask you guys today, what do you see when you go for a walk? Are you at such a clip that you're really not paying attention and you're just in your head and you're just thinking? I mean, that can be okay because a lot of times, there are times I do that and when I'm in my head like that, I really um, have a lot of breakthroughs because I'm out in the quiet and out um, away from everything else. But there's another level to things and when you can incorporate the two of them, it's pretty intense and to me, very wild. I can be hiking with my guys all day long at a really good clip and still manage to pay attention to my surroundings and see a heart-shaped rock the size of the tip of my pinky laying next to my foot as I'm racing up the mountain. So when you see those things, it's just amazing when, when you can really like use your peripheral and everything else. And just take it all in, not just walk and miss it all. So I want to encourage you to try to incorporate that because it's pretty wild. Uh, the mountain boy and I see so many wild and crazy things in nature because we're paying attention. But we're still having conversation, hiking and moving and doing multiple things. And I do that when I'm out by myself too. Hel good morning, Miss Rachel. It's good to have you joining me. I love you. <laughs> now, two other things I'm going to mention that I'm thankful for today. Um, one is a special lady named Helen. She is my deep muscle therapist, my angel in my health and healing. <laughs> and she has saved my life. I, I, there's just no other way to put it. With my healing um, and my, my 
journey that I've been on, I don't know where I would be without her amazing gift to heal. She has saved me and helped me so much. And earlier this week, I was really struggling. I was struggling pretty bad um, two days ago, too, but managed to pull off a video in the evening and was feeling better. But my face has been swelling up. And unfortunately, my face is my meter for my health, which really sucks sometimes because all kinds of stuff breaks loose on my face, whether it's rashes or swelling or whatever. So it's not the most pretty, but... God's got a plan and I'm just rolling with it. Uh, but this week was really hard because when my face swells up and it swells up right in here in my eyes, I've got so much head pressure and 95% of what I do is in my head. So to try to think and to write and to function is just really hard. And then to try to do a video and remember all that I'm trying to say. Because what has been happening is I will start a conversation with somebody and seconds after opening my mouth, I don't even remember what I was going to say. So it's really, really, it's just, it's amazingly difficult. And it's really hard for somebody like myself who's used to just rolling and, and rolling with things. And thank you, Patty. Yes, I feel so much better today. And I'm even more excited because I found out that what's going on with me, even though my eyes are puffy today, um... It's not what I was expecting it to be. All along, it's been mold exposure. And right now, this has been going on for about a month where it's been setting in intermittently, but this week it really hit me hard. And we started closing the house up for winter. We've got a lot of rain and moisture, and I was so afraid it was mold. And if it was mold here, that means what am I going to do for winter? Where am I going to live? Where am I going to exist? How am I going to do this? Because mold is everywhere, and it affects me in that drastic of a way that I am dysfunctional and that I'm unable to even think properly. So it really, really sucks. But I found out this week that it's viral, a uh, heavy-duty virus, and I've got to take some heavy-duty supplements to help push this out of my system. And I know that just because I was given that information, I feel a whole lot better because it was a little bit of a concern. So, and that's part of being grateful. It's also, you know, we're only, we're all human, and we all, you know, it's, we get a little afraid. We get a little nervous. Sometimes we need to be courageous like I was the other day. So, you know, it's all part of life. And, you know, I want these videos to reassure you that you are not alone. That even, you know, the best people out there, the movie stars, the whatever that's out there, you know, the people that are that are, are doing a lot of self-help in, in, in the varying arenas, they have off days too and they struggle and it's so important for people to realize that we're all just real. We're all on the same playing field and we all have struggles and the struggles are struggles regardless how big or how small. So take courage in that and take strength in that and, and run with it when you have your rough days and find the things that are even the simplest of things that will make you smile. When I find a heart-shaped rock, those of you that know me, I find heart-shaped everything. I find heart-shaped cherries when I'm doing my cherries, apples, potatoes. I've been walking and there's a mud puddle with a frothy heart in the middle. There, we've, The mountain boy and I have been out and there was a heart shape in the snow that looked like in the middle of nowhere. There's no tracks near it, no nothing, and it looked like somebody just took a stick and drew a heart. And I, I know those are God's signs for me and those are ways of Get putting joy in my life and making me smile. It's something simple and pleasurable to me, and it just lets me know that my life is good and gonna even be better. So, you know, we all we all we all need our little thing, and that's mine. So, but I'm really grateful for Helen. She has been an angel, and I just wanted to give her a shout out today and let her know I love her deeply and dearly, and that I don't know where I'd be without her. So I'm going to visit her shortly. And uh, I'm blessed to have her. She just has helped me heal so much. And on uh, the 7th, it was her birthday. So I just want to publicly give her a big happy birthday. I'm not going to sing because that would scare you. That's one thing I'm not good at is singing. So let's not go there. But anyway, sorry about that. Okay. Um, hopefully this is still recording. Give me a thumbs up. I just had a call come through and I've never had that happen before. So I think you guys are still out there. Um, by the way, what are you grateful for today, and where are you joining me from? The other thing I'm really grateful for is my in-laws. My in-laws are such amazing people and such amazing Christian people, and I just feel so very blessed to have them in my life. They have taken me under their wing. Thanks, Patty. Um, they have taken me and my son under their wing and, and love us all, and they are just 
I don't know where I'd be without them. They are encouragers for me. They are um, a real light to me because they they share their feelings with me. It's something that I've never had is somebody to tell me that they're proud of me and somebody to, to you know, encourage me, to be there for me. They're my prayer warriors. Oh, very awesome, Patty. I'm sorry, pause, guys. Patty just wrote that uh, her son has received a call for an interview for a holiday position that he needs very much, and she's so grateful for this. Awesome. I'll keep you in my prayers. That's fantastic. And, um, oh, awesome. I know Rachel was joining me, and she is thankful for the lesson she's learning. Ah, and she's thankful for me. I love you. <laughs> And my my in-laws are very special. That's what she said. She knows my in-laws. And they are just amazing people. And I was blessed this year to be out hunting with my father-in-law when I shot my elk. And it was so much fun. He he and I have a very special relationship. Not that my mother-in-law and I don't. But um, I don't know. It's just really unique. He just makes me laugh a lot. And it's just the funniest things that he and I end up saying to each other. So... Anyway, we were out hunting, and I mean, it was the windiest day I think I've ever experienced being out hunting. Had I not had my hair through the ponytail hole in the back of my hat, I think I would have lost it several times, and it was just, it was horrible windy, and we were in an open clear cut, and uh, it was just a really neat hunt, and it was really neat to share with him, but we were sitting there, and we probably had about maybe 10, 15 minutes before it was too late to hunt anymore, and I had been staring at this big, huge grass patch that was 300 y yards away and it, it was stuck out like a sore thumb and it was just something that caught my eyes and there was a trail there so I kept watching and kept watching and the winds were crazy it had stopped once that it just slowed down and it was just dead quiet you could have dropped a pin and heard it land and but it was just gusting when when I had my opportunities and I looked over and there was that grass patch and it started moving so uh, a cow elk had come through walked in that trail and that light patch was still there it was just her and she started walking broadside up the mountain so I was just like no way at which point I pulled up the rifle he's um, glassing and, and uh, got his range finder and he's given me instructions and I was right on the elk and he said 300 yards and the wind just stopped dead still I'm talking divine intervention it was just amazing and he was still giving me instructions but it just felt right and I shot she went about probably 25 40 yards from where I shot her and, and dropped. So it was just a neat experience. So we were high five and jumping up and down, hugging, doing all that good stuff you do because I'm excited. That fills my freezer, that feeds my family, and that was my first elk. And it's really a great feeling when you can provide that much meat for your family. So it's not that I was celebrating the kill, I was celebrating what I got for my family and as a result of it and you know God blessed me with that elk and it just was a neat experience to share with him and I couldn't tell him that he was my best guide ever because my husband would get upset so he was my second best but he is an amazing man my mother-in-law is an amazing woman and I'm just very grateful that they love me the way they do it's it's a neat feeling because I've been waiting for that my whole life so thank you guys I love you so very much and I just wanted to share that and and I want you guys to, you know, really be aware of, of the things around you that you have to be grateful for. There is so much to be grateful for. Simple pleasures. Even a cup of hot tea on a rainy day. You know, it just it's all how you look at it. And, you know, many people go through life and, and their cup is half empty and they look at the cup half full. And, you know, I look at it that I am just grateful that I have a mug, that I have a cup and I can overflow it because it's all perspective. And and I choose to be positive. You know, we we get in those moments, all of us do, where you, you just can't kick that negative thing. And when I get there, it really aggravates me because I don't want to be there and I don't want to be stuck in that negative spot. And we have control to pull ourselves out of that spot. Sometimes it's really hard. But that's when you reach out to your best friends and you ask them for prayers to lift you when you're struggling like that. Because we all get in those spots. I do too. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not exempt. So to see your blessings. I, wanna, I really want to encourage you to see your blessings. Now, I want to talk about the preparedness side of things. 
And guys, thanks for sharing what you're grateful for. And those of you that are coming in after the fact, share what you're grateful for below. This is supposed to be two-sided, not just me sharing. I want I want you guys to interact with me because we are going to be doing a, a giveaway at the end of the 30 days for the most the you know the most active person or the one that really stood out to me um, through the 30 days. So don't miss your opportunities. I'll be giving away my book, How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle, and also Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover, and I'll probably be thickening the pot with other things as well but I want to talk about um, from scratch cooking we started talking about that the other night and it was just I kept um, the connection kept dropping so from scratch cooking could not be more important in your lives today processed foods are so full of toxic chemicals and toxic things and I know when I say that people are like what are you talking about there's if if you look at the ingredients on the things that you like and you don't you can't pronounce them and you don't know what the ingredients are most likely you shouldn't be eating them. The other thing is GMOs are in all of our food unless it says otherwise. It's just and GMOs are genetically modified organisms and they are they are they're toxic. How do I know that? Because I do not eat any of them anymore. And now if I accidentally have something with it in, I get horribly horribly sick so your bodies are used to the garbage we're putting in but what happens is even though your body's used to it and you may not really be sick you ache you hurt you can't sleep you are depressed all the time there's all kinds of different side effects and you have gut issues so once you start weaning yourself off of the GMOs and the chemicals and the soda pop and the corn syrup and all that stuff you start to get really healthy and you start to feel really good and you suddenly start losing lots of weight because your body's not hanging on to the garbage I learned this through my illness that all the garbage that ends up in your body ends up in fat your body finds it in your system and freaks out not knowing what it is it's a foreign object and it stores it in fat so that has a big bearing on why our country is so overweight is because there's so many toxins in our food. Some of the other countries won't even accept our our natural resources, our natural foods coming into their country anymore because of all the GMOs. So it's really important that you pay attention to that. There's a blog post on my website about uh, actually a podcast about GMOs and my girlfriend wrote a really great article on GMOs that uh, is linked in there so I encourage you to check it out if you are not familiar with what I'm talking about but I I won't eat anything processed unless it says that it's non GMO certified because I can't I can't Over eating is overrated for me right now because I'm very limited on what I can have because of my healing process but um, and another thing I'm grateful for because the certain things I can eat I love and it's all working out well but and I'm healing and getting stronger so I want you to keep that in mind now cooking from scratch is not near as complicated as people make it out to be you saw what I was making the other night in the video and if you missed that one be sure to watch it I was making elk tenderloins and uh, potatoes and some vegetables it's real simple and it's a healthy meal I, today I have a roast in the um, oven it's not cold enough outside to have the wood stove going or I'd be cooking myself out of house and home and shorts and a tank top all day to, so that my food could cook. We're getting there though. But a roast in the oven with potatoes, cut up carrots, you know, you have a meal ready to roll. Slow cookers work great for those of you that are busy because I know that's the biggest struggle. My biggest struggle for um, the mountain boy when he was in um, public school was snacky foods and packing a lunch you know trying to find the most wholesome things and that was well he's gonna be 21 in December so it was a while ago and um, now there's so many better options out there and so many choices so you can find those things you know that you might need on a pinch snack bars um, fruit leather um, varied things like that but all that stuff you can make and um, I share a lot of recipes for that on my website and the people that I'm going to mention also do the same so you can find recipes to make these things you know from scratch by yourself and that has been my goal was when we found out the mountain boy was on a gluten-free and dairy-free diet um, back in 2003 um, I started making all of his favorite foods 
in a gluten-free fashion and have perfected everything and was able to, you know, adjust his diet without any hitches. So when you have special diets and things, there's so many ways around it. Um, my cookbook is, it's a Trier Wilderness Cookbook, Homesteading the Traditional Way, Volume 1. Has a lot of, who that light is really bad. Maybe you can see, there we go. And um, this has uh, how to cook gluten free and dairy free and for specialty diets. It talks about how to get started cooking from scratch. It gives a lot of tips and tricks on gluten free and dairy free. It also gives tips and tricks and information on cooking with a sun oven, cooking on a wood stove, and I know I'm missing something. But this was just a uh, a small labor of love putting together that information to share with others as well as our favorite recipes. Um, so you can find that and you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash Tammy Treyer and that will take you to all of my books. One of the things that can be really overwhelming for people that are just getting started from cooking from scratch and baking is having the right tools and having them handy. I do not have a traditional or con conventional kitchen. I have a makeshift kitchen right now. So I'm going to show you something. I love antiques, as you guys know. This is a bread box. Ah, an old metal tin bread box. Since I don't have cupboards, I have all of my baking things in here. And I want to show you something else, too, while I'm at it. I gotta find it. Give me a minute. Okay. My mother-in-law blessed me with this. I told you I have all kinds of antiques and that's all I use in my kitchen. Okay, so this is one of them. Um, this was her cousin's mother's tool that she had and she gifted me with this. Um, Aunt Louise passed away last November and she had the opportunity to go in and get some things that uh, were important to her and that meant something to her and she found this for me. And I absolutely treasure it. I use this all the time and I don't have an electric mixer in my house running all the time. I do have one but I, I very rarely use it because it pulls a lot of power and I just like using my manual tools. But in this bread box, and I don't have them in there right now, I have my mixing bowl, my measuring cup, my spatula. Okay, so I have everything extremely accessible right in front of my cooking area. <sighs> yes, I love it. Rachel says she has two tin bread boxes that she keeps all her coffee fixings in. Yes, I love using these things. These things are so great. I have one on the counter with bread in it, believe it or not, and I have... I have four of these things. They're great because I don't have cupboards and we do get mice and I hate and bugs, you know, I don't want stuff in my stuff. So I keep it clean this way. I also have my other measuring cups in here. I have, oh, I have my measuring spoons. Look, are they not the cutest? <laughs> and I have my ramekins. I found those at the thrift store for $3 for six of them. And of course they're heart shaped. These are great because I make my English muffins in these. So, you know, you, you get a collection. Oh, and I got to show you these, too. You'll get a kick out of these if I can find them without rattling too much. Here. This is kind of a little fun find, and I sent these to some of my friends. These, this is a smidgen. I don't know if you can see that. A smidgen, a pinch, a dash and a nip. I thought these were just absolutely adorable because they are actual measurements, folks. Um, you see them in the old recipes, so I had to have these. So I have those in there as well. But to have all your baking or, you know, this is basically my baking needs. Um, I also use it to make my pizza doughs and stuff for the mountain boy. But um, having everything handy right here, right accessible. I'm right next to all of my ingredients in my pantry. So having things convenient, close, accessible makes the job really less stressful. For somebody who's going into from scratch cooking and doesn't have everything handy or searching your kitchen, it just takes longer and it's, it just is, is cumbersome. So that's my tip for you today. Ah, cool. Rachel says she has those too. The Amish store had them. I believe that. By the way, folks, Amish stores have some of the greatest things for off-grid living and for... Uh, preparedness, simple living, self-reliance, great stuff. 
I highly recommend checking them out. That's where I got my drying rack from. My mother-in-law bought me the drying rack, which is great for my winter months. It's actually raining right now, and when it's cold out, everything freezes on the wash line, so it's stiff as a board. So we use the inside uh, drying rack and my wash line in front of my wood stove. <laughs> so anyway, um, keeping things handy, keeping things organized, keeping things close at hand is really important. Organization, that, that falls into every part of our life, which we will talk about another day. Now I want to mention a couple friends of mine to you. Many of you might know Melissa K. Norris. She is an author and uh, blogger, radio show host. Uh, we are very similar in the things that we do, the things that we love. She's out of Washington. And she made, uh, a writ let me try that again, live video, you got to love it. She wrote um, the Made From Scratch book and she just published her uh, new book, which I will be sharing with you later, so I'm not even going to mention that right now. But you can find her book by going to tryourwilderness.com slash made from scratch. One of my gluten-free recipes is in her book, which I was very blessed to be included. But her book is really great also, it, taking you through the steps and explaining, you know, starting from scratch cooking. The thing too is to have certain rest, uh, ingredients on hand. What I recommend is the Figure out what your favorite foods are and what it would take to make your favorite foods and have those ingredients on hand and start there. That's a great place to start. Um, another friend of mine, oh, and you can find Melissa at melissaknorris.com. And um, her website is riddled with recipes and she uh, does a lot of DIY things and how-tos on making crafts and different things like that as well. So I encourage you to check her out. She's a very huge wealth of information, a dear friend of mine, and um, I recommend her materials greatly. Another friend of mine is Wardy Harmon from the Trad Cooking School. You can find that by going to tryourwilderness.com slash tradcookschool. That's, all the links are down below in the description, both here and on YouTube. And Wardy uh, focuses on a very from scratch whole foods diet. And uh, she wrote, we were talking about fermenting the other night, and I wanted to pass her book on to you. You can find it by going to tryerwilderness.com slash fermenting. It is the complete idiot's guide to fermenting. So she is an extreme wealth of information on fermenting. She does a lot with cultures and... Um, the beverages. I do a lot with kombucha and uh, kefir, and uh, but she does. She ferments everything. So if there's any question, that's where you want to direct your attention. She's amazing, and she is the one that runs the Trad Cook School as well. And I've taught a couple classes on there on sun oven cooking, and um, I know I did another one. I believe it was on gluten free things too. Um, and I also had written for her for a while as well before I got sick. So you can find some of my materials on her site as well. And uh, I really encourage you to check them out. If you are looking for guidance, those are two sites that you will find such valuable information. Now I mentioned the other night and showed you that I was doing my sauerkraut. The lighting is so bad in here, but you can see it. I'm going to try to move and see if I can't. There we go. Um... You can see that it is starting to ferment. There's juices in there. There's bubbles going on. And I really, really, really like this mason top equipment. Mason top um, carries the fermenting devices. This is a pickle pipe. And in here is a pickle pebble from mason tops. And their book is really wonderful as well and a great asset for your kitchen which is the fermenting guide and recipe book from Mason Tops, which comes with their kit. Um, but the kit includes um, the book, the uh, four of the pickle pipes, four of the pickle pebble, pebbles. This is just not, that's not fair. And the pickle packer. <laughs> this is just too much for my brain. Anyway, I think it's really cute though and I think it's a great concept and I really like their silicone tops because uh, they have a little vent there. I've used other equipment and it's just more cumbersome and not as easy to use and I just like this concept. I will be doing my cranberry relish um, this week too. I'm going to get my cranberries today. Um, so that'll be something else I'll be fermenting and share with you. 
But from scratch cooking is a process. It doesn't have to be something that's overwhelming. Just like I said, start with your favorite foods. Start with something that you like to make for your family all the time, but you make it out of a box. And figure out how to make it out of from scratch ingredients. And if you need help anytime, I am always welcome to answer questions. You can email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. And just organization, having the tools you need. And if you are new to being in the kitchen, you don't have to go out and spend tons of money. I get most of my stuff at the thrift stores because it's just so much. If it's some, I just, I hate to spend money. I'm frugal. And it's not that there aren't good products out there. Like I said, there are certain products I will recommend as a must-have. But when it comes to getting a measuring cup and a measuring spoon and some tools for your kitchen, I, hi I highly recommend checking out the thrift stores. For one, you're going to find better quality. We we purchased a slotted spoon while my mother-in-law was here from the store. And it just amazed me, the quality of the um, utensil. And it was really funny because I noticed it, but the mountain boy said something about it the other day when he pulled it out of the thing. He goes, like, this doesn't feel really solid. I'm like, yeah, I know. It's just amazing to me today how things are made. And I love going to the thrift stores and finding things that were in grandma's attic that are such quality products. This thing will never break on me. And this is, I don't know, 40 maybe 40 years old. I love this stuff. And my, my, um, I'm going to spin this around and show you this. This is one of my favorite things. Bear with me. You see this baby? This is old. This is an arcade cast iron and glass coffee grinder. That was a must for my kitchen. I know I've shared that before, but I love that thing. And that is amazing. The only thing that's going to break on that is the glass pieces and that, you know, glass breaks, but the, the construction of that is, it's, I don't know, things were just made better. And, and we need to get back there, and we need to end up doing that now, but I, I don't know what will happen there. So find your tools in the thrift stores and the antique stores. Um, that's what I do. But anyway, I have to run because I have to go visit Helen. I see a bunch of you on here, and I'm so thankful for you guys chiming in. And it was good to have you join me, Rachel and Patty. I'm so glad to have you. And continue to join me. We have a bunch of more days left. Today's only the 9th, and we're doing this till the 30th. So keep joining me. Share your input. Keep sharing with me what you're grateful for. Share this with your friends. The more the merrier. I love meeting new people. And this is just a great way for me to do things and to share my uh, information and my tips and tricks. So, guys, have a blessed day. Thank you again for joining me. And I will see you tomorrow. God bless. <laughs>